but this time we're looking at the sine graph and how those will look from a graph, how you write the equation from the graph itself. Okay, so just like before, we're going to identify the segment of the sine graph, all right? Now, what's important with sine is remember your parent function, like always. Sine always starts at zero, goes up, and then down. So it always starts at a midline. The parent function has a midline, right? And whatever the amplitude is, it's the same going up as it is down, right? So if I look at this graph, to find that midline, I want to find, okay, this is going up to 3 and down to negative 3. So where's the middle? Well, the middle is right here at 0, which is quite helpful indeed. But notice that the graph starts at the midline and it ends at the midline. Okay, it starts, goes through it, and it ends again at 1. So that's where I need to pick my segment. I need to start it at the midline and go all the way through it down to the trough and back up to the midline. That is one full period of sine. And that's what I need to darken as I proceed through this problem. Okay, so make sure you understand you got to darken one full period of sign, midline to midline, one full period, peak to trough. Okay, now what if it's reflected? Well, okay, so it's still midline to midline, but it goes trough to peak. Okay, trough to peak with a midline in between. So it's the same idea. I can't start here because this is start to the peak. I would have to start it here and go down first. So trough to peak. And remember, if it's reflected, then I would have to put a negative in front of the A value on my graph. And you'll see that as we go. That's what will make it reflect as you go. All right. All right, so again, here's the general rules. And these are a lot like what you did yesterday with cosine. The equation, notice the equation is pretty much the same. We just change it to sine. A sine bx minus c plus d, all right? Find a, you take the highest y value and subtract the lowest y value and divide by two, that's your a. Remember, if it's reflected, then we make it negative a, okay? That's all that changes. This process is the same, you just make it negative. To find b, remember b represents, it helps you find the period, so find the period of one complete cycle. So you took two pi over b equals that, that time Solve it for B. C, just like yesterday, it's BX minus C. You found the B already. X is the X value where your segment begins. You plug those two in and solve it for C. Now D. D is a midline. All right, it's a little different than the cosine graphs because remember our sine graphs have to come back to midline. So you got to find this midline, and that's what D is. All right. So to remember to complete the equation, you plug in the calculated values, remembering that C always has the opposite sign because it's a minus in the original equation. Okay, on the sign graph here, let's figure some things out. All right. Um, first, let's find our A value. Okay, we need to know our segment. We need to know where the midline is, though, first of all. Now to get the midline, if you can't, it's not really clear, go ahead and find A first and I'll show you how to use that, okay? So if a is 1 half, what's the maximum y value? The maximum y value is up here at 4, minus the minimum value, which is a negative 2. So that makes it plus 2. So a is then 3. Now, how did I use that for my midline? Well, look, that means the amplitude is 3. It has to go 3 units above the midline, 3 units below the midline. So I'll count down 3. Here's where your midline has to be. And if you did it right, it should be 3 below. 1, 2, 3. That's where the trough is, OK? So that will help us later. That helps us with the D value. That helps us find the, the, the midline, OK? Now, B, the period of this graph. Well, if it's not really clear what the period is, only back up. We found the midline. Period of this graph, you can go, you can measure peak to peak. or trough to trough. Either way, we'll, we'll get the same place. So if I, I can clearly see that this trough is at, at x is 0, and this trough is where x is pi. So the distance between these two is just a pi distance. So that means the period is pi. So when I calculate this, I set it equal to pi and solve it. 2 pi equals pi of pi b, divide by pi. Oops, pi, not b. That's 
go calculate away. So B equals 2. All right, this will help me on the next step. So over here, we've already calculated A was 3, B was 2. Remember, our midline was at 1. So really, that's your D value. We've already done this. So D equals 1. We found that already. And we know that the distance is pi. Now, in order to do this part, we have to know our segment really clearly. And remember, it has to go from midline to midline through one peak and one trough. So I'm going to just do it this way. I'm going to darken this section and look at what is that x value where it actually started. Well, it's between 0 and pi over 2. So what's right in between there? That would be pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to use that value. 2 times pi over 4 minus c equals 0. Well, if I multiply these fractions, I get pi over 2 minus c equals 0. Add c to both sides, so pi over 2 equals c. Now, that said, I know all my elements to write the equation. So I can say y equals 3 sine b was 2 x minus c, so minus c was pi over 2, plus d, plus 1. So there's our equation. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If not, we'll go back over it in class and um, see what questions you have. Good luck and see you then.